Blessed be the holy name of God. Amen. Please be seated. Prophets are a rare breed, a strange lot. They are curious creatures. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, a prophet is one anointed by God to be a mouthpiece, a spokesperson, an amplifier for the voice of God. Prophets come in many varieties from each class and rank, devout and unsure. There are 55 prophets whose prophecies are found in the Hebrew and Christian scriptures. 48 men, seven women, though I'm sure there were more, whose role in life was to urge, to foretell, to warn, to act. Yes, prophets are a rare breed, a strange lot, curious creatures. And each prophet comes with a story, a narrative, a beginning, a moment in which God reaches down low, in awe and in mystery, and grants a new vision, a new voice, a moment in which God calls. Samuel. At a young, young age, he was sent to minister along Eli, Eli who was the high priest of the temple. Samuel was his apprentice, his helper, his assistant. And Eli and young Samuel lived in a time, as the scripture reads, when the word of the Lord was rare and visions were not widespread. We can only imagine what life was like for Samuel and the temple. The scripture is not quite clear. But the temple, massive and grand in stature, welcomed thousands of pilgrims who carried with them their burnt offerings, their sin offerings, their guilt offerings. As one theologian describes, those in the temple were burned, ashen-faced people, most of them hauling their stubborn animals up to the altar to be killed. There was a great deal of blood. Blood splashed on the altar, blood sprinkled on the veil that set apart the holiest area of the sanctuary. The burning incense did battle with the smell, but it could not beat it. Perhaps Samuel tended the cauldron where the sacrificial meat was to be boiled, or he was charged with keeping the oil in the lamps lit or the doorway swept. Spending his days in the temple, young Samuel heard the tales of ancient prophets and sages. He would have read inscriptions and gazed upon stone icons that told the horrors of the flood and God's love. Samuel would have heard chants thanking God for the exodus from Egypt centuries prior and would have been warned of of temptation, such as those temptations that were found in the Garden of Eden. Yes, young Samuel, he knew much about God, about the stories of God, the fables of God, the things of old. At evening, Samuel would lay down by the ark of God, the ark of God, a throne of the invisible immortal king, the very place that tradition would say God's chest would rest, God's beating heart would rest. And inside the ark contained all of the sacred relics of the nation's past, a container of manna, Aaron's rod, the the tablets of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Night after night, Samuel would rest his head at its feet. Resting next to the unknown mystery, surrounded by remnants of a God whose voice hadn't been heard, whose visions hadn't been awake for centuries. And he was awakened in the middle of the night. God speaks and God calls Samuel four separate times, but three of those times, Samuel thinks it's the elder priest, Eli. Who is calling him. It is not until the fourth time that Samuel responds unto God, speak, speak, for your servant is listening. God said to Samuel, listen carefully. I'm getting ready to do something in Israel that is going to make the ears of the nation tingle, the elite fearful and the powerful shake. And I'm going to do this not alone, but I'm going to do this through you. What Samuel is called to do is not easy. Samuel is called to speak in a time of change and turmoil with impending war. 
the people would suffer, even Samuel. A cloud was looming over Israel, and Samuel could no longer lie down, but he had to get up. He had to act on what he had heard, for now he was a prophet of God. And life for him and life of Israel would never be the same. He was awoken in the middle of the night, in the middle of rest, in the middle of comfort, of safety, next to that holy place, next to the ark, next to God's beating chest. He was awakened in the middle of the night. He was awakened in the middle of the night by a voice of God prodding him, warning him, calling him. He was awakened in the middle of the night, in the middle of a deep slumber, because something wasn't right. Because a cloud was looming over Israel, and God was ready to do a new thing, a hard thing. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, young Samuel heard God's voice, yes, in the middle of the night. In January of 1956, during the Montgomery bus boycott, during a time when the word of the Lord seemed rare, and visions were not widespread. Martin Luther King Jr. received a threatening phone call late at night, and he couldn't sleep. He was at the breaking point of exhaustion, about to give up. He was about to turn in, turn away, turn back. He was about to subdue to his anger, silence his compassion, abandon the cause. But in the middle of the night, he couldn't sleep. In the middle of the night, King said he could hear the quiet assurance of an inner voice saying unto him, stand up for righteousness. Stand up for truth. God will be at your side forever. It was an inner voice that he had heard before, but never so clearly. In the middle of the night, when he should have been sleeping, when he wanted to be sleeping, in the middle of the night, when he found himself near the bitter end of exhaustion, when all seemed lost and the curtain appeared to be closing, Martin heard that voice of God in the middle of the night. The prophets, young Samuel and Martin, lived in turbulent time. Awoken in the middle of the night to disturb, to renew, to free. Awoken in the middle of the night by an inner voice, the voice of God comforting them, haunting them, energizing them. You and I live in turbulent times. The lesson of Samuel and Martin, friends, is this. Even in the midst of looming clouds and worldwide tensions, even when all seems lost and it appears confusion and defeat is about to conquer, God speaks. God speaks to me. God speaks to you. If we are willing, God speaks through that inner voice comforting us, haunting us, energizing us. And sometimes the word of God to us is not quite the message we are hoping for. It may not be the word we want to hear. Maybe a word that challenges us or rebukes us or calls us to something different. Sometimes I feel that I am still sleeping. Sometimes I allow my own privilege, my race, my education, my citizenship, my paycheck, cover me like warm blankets in a safe place, hiding me from the realities of this world, quieting that voice of God. How easy it has been for me to change the channel on the television when news breaks of another mass murder or genocide in Nigeria or to close my blinds, blocking the view of those who sleep on the street just feet from my warm, safe home, or to alter my rude home so not to encounter those who are crying out for justice and humanity, who are pleading, pleading to remind us that some lives in this world matter more than others, and black lives matter too. Yes, it is the middle of the night. 
It is the middle of the night for me, it is the middle of the night for you, and it has been for a long time. And I have been able to keep the lights out and my ears covered and my head buried in the pillows of my own power and my own privilege. Because I am afraid. Because if I am honest with myself, I know that God's voice is telling me, love your neighbor. Love your enemy. Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for truth. Be bold. Be bold because hearts are breaking, bodies are freezing. Children are dying because of the color of their skin. Yes, it is the middle of the night, and I am afraid to hear that inner voice, that voice of God. I am afraid because that same voice that called young Samuel and Martin and so many others, that voice called them to stand, to risk, to die. God's voice is a dangerous thing. It is a haunting thing. But like the prophets, like young Samuel and Martin, with every challenge, we can be sure that there will also come a promise. With every call, there comes an assurance. Be not afraid. I will be with you. You are not alone. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. With every challenge, there comes a promise. With every call, there comes an assurance of God's strength alive in our timidness. God's voice is a daring one. It is an expansive one, a surprising one, that calls us beyond our small and limited selves to join with God's greater self. God's voice invites us, I think it invites each of us to greater things, not of narrowness or discouragement or defeat, but vision and hope. And if we, if we listen for God, if we truly open our hearts and truly listen, we will hear a dangerous voice telling us to do what's right. Thanks be to God. Amen.